You were a 12-year-old kid. You came on the set, didn't you? I did. I was in short trousers, because... <laughs> 12-year-olds used to wear short trousers in those <laughs> days. Uh, it was 67, was it? Web of Fear? No. Anybody know? Web of Fear, yeah. Yeah, Web of mm. Fear. Yeah. And I met Fraser for the first time. I was totally in awe. Oh. Absolutely in awe. He was, you know, it was like, well, I mean, apart from meeting the Daleks, he was second best. <laughs> <laughs> So put your hands together and give a big round of applause to my wonderful, extremely handsome and talented husband, Fraser Hines. <laughs> and my other equally wonderful and equally handsome husband, Mr. Troughton. <laughs> Is uh, uh, microphone's working? Is it is it is yeah, it working? Even even pull your uh, only finger out because microphone uh, yeah, audience yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a, this is a first. I've never been interviewed by Roxy before. No, I'm... you have many a time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What time do you call oh. this? <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> Well, it's yeah. an honour and a pleasure, and and it was all Ken's idea, so it was uh, Ken's you can idea. all you can all blame mm. Ken afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I thought this audience was left over from Sasha, but no, they the, no, yeah. stayed for us. Yes. Yes. They have indeed. Well, well done. Thank you. Yeah, yes. yeah. Well Yay. done. Thank you very much. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> right, lock the doors. <laughs> So I thought just just to start things off, I mean, everyone's familiar with, I, I would think everyone's familiar with both your works, but just in case that there are any new people here, um, I thought I'd just start off with how did you, how did you get into Doctor Who? Oh, uh, well, I'd worked with Sean Sutton, who's the head of drama, yeah. as a little boy in uh, Hunting Town, Run to Earth, Cinderella, uh, Long Way Home, lots and lots of TV shows. Mm. Uh, and then the part of Jamie came up, and he just said to Ennis Lloyd, the producer, oh, Fraser can do a Scottish accent. I've used him before. It's, so see Fraser. And I saw Ennis Lloyd have a cup of tea, didn't have to audition. And, and, <laughs> and I got home, and my agent said, oh, Ennis Lloyd's been on, and are you free in two weeks' time to do the Wow. Water? Was it that quick? Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's amazing, yeah. yeah. So wait, wait, wait. Oh. oh, look, there's oh, us. Oh, look. Oh, oh, look. Oh. With, your, with your book. Hey, that, yeah. Look it's at that. a very good book. That's it's, it's 2012. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> oh, Amazing. It yeah, it was, yeah. 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 It's yeah. the sort of book once you put down, you can't pick up again. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said that wrong, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I believe originally you weren't brought in as a companion. No, the no I, I yeah. was just to do for those four episodes, and I think after episode two had gone out, the rumor has it the BBC was inundated with phone calls and you know letters to the editor, sort of thing, right. saying let's keep him. Right. I was told later on that my agent had a they had an option on me, but my agent didn't tell me. Oh, by the way, if they like you, you're going to get a year's work in case you know. Oh, God, I've got to be good in this. I've got it, and you and you blow it. Don't the pressure's you? on. Yeah. 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 Right, uh, and then and then you stayed on for three years. Three Still years. the longest running companion. Yeah. Oh, really? yeah. Still, yeah. 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 Yes. In fact. I'd be there now, you know, but <laughs> your, your, dad, your dad had his wife was saying, you must leave now and do other stuff. And my agent kept saying, oh, you must be doing, you should do other stuff, Fraser, leave, leave. <laughs> I always say, if we hadn't had those two women nagging us, you'd never have heard of David Tennant. <laughs> we would still be there now. <laughs> were you sad? I mean, were, were you oh, with yeah. dad's decision? Cause, oh, yeah. We, yeah. We, we, we didn't want to leave. We were having such good fun. Mm, In fact, yeah. I was going to leave six months earlier because mm. uh, my contract ran out. And, and Patrick said, oh, no, no, stay. My, my, 
I'm here for another six months, stay, and we'll all leave together. Yeah. And then Padders, Wendy Pavi said, well, if you two are leaving, you know, I'll, 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 I'll come with you. It's snowball effect. Because yeah, she yeah. said, it's John Pertwee, yeah. you know, mm. get a head shot of me and you'll his crutch. And yeah. I'll never get in the same shot because he's so tall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so how about you, uh, Mr. Chowdhury? Yes, Chowdy. darling. Mr. Chowdhury. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did it all start for you? For me, um, I didn't want to be. Uh, I didn't want to be an actor. I wanted to be a scientist. Um, and uh, when I was quite young, I, I was more interested in science. It wasn't until I went to the Palladium when I was a teenager and took a summer job <clears throat> and um, was working backstage. And the bug hit me. Uh, I think it was in the blood, really. Uh, and from that point on, uh, I went straight to the Unicorn Theatre in London and uh, became uh, an acting ASM, yeah. which is basically someone who does the backhand, you know, backstage stuff, uh, but also goes on as a butler or a maid on occasions. <laughs> I made a very good maid, actually. <laughs> I got rather nice legs. You had the legs. Um, I Red played legs. a nun. I also played a dragon. All sorts of lovely little parts. And you sort of learn on the job. It, 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 you know, this idea of uh, going to drama school didn't appeal to me. I wanted to be more like an apprentice and learn how to, you know, watch, watch other actors doing it. So that's where I, I started. So here's an interesting question, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. How did you two first meet? Uh, I th was it on your, your 12 year old kid? Or you came on the set, didn't you? I did. I was in short trousers, because <laughs> 12 year olds used to wear short trousers in those <laughs> days. Uh, it was 67, was it? Web of Fear? No. Anybody no, Web know? Of Fear, yeah. Yeah, Web of mm. Fear. Yeah, and I met Fraser for the first time. I was totally in awe, wow. absolutely in awe. He was, you know, it was like, well, I mean, apart from meeting the Daleks, he was second best. <laughs> 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 but Fraser was, you know, identified with him because he was a young lad and I wanted to aspire to be him because that always happens, doesn't it? You know, younger kids always want to aspire to be those slightly older children. Um, and I remember him uh, doing a scene, you know, and just thinking, that is what I want to do. Um, I want to do that. Um, and also, I want to be a scientist. So I got really confused. <laughs> but it was great. It was really lovely. And then, of course, the second time I met him, it was 2012 at that oh, yeah. convention. And I bounced up to him and said, hello, Fraser. And that was, that. I don't think we met between. We no, we both worked for Yorkshire TV exactly. in different jobs. Yeah. But never no. met the company. And we were there for a while yeah. as well. We were there for, well, I was there for about a decade. Yeah. And you, you must have been about the same. About the same, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we sort of looked at each other across the canteen every night again, but we were always going in different directions. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. we never actually said hello. And no. so the first time I actually said hello, it's Fraser, I saw you, you know, when you were, when I was 12, was, you know, yeah. 2012, yeah. which is extraordinary, really. But it's great because it's, you know, it was like, I don't know, it, when, I, when I met him in 2012, I just felt so, you know, again, I was in awe. It was really lovely. I just wanted to, you know, tell you all about my experience, you know, when I was younger. Oh, but your, your dad was just a lovely person to, to work with. Yeah. We, we never had a crossword in, in the whole three years. Never. And sometimes, if you're working with somebody, even if you're close to them, you'll there'll be, you know, one day. Absolutely. No. Yeah. I mean, there is those sorts of actors that, uh, you know, they're very rare. Um, you meet a, an actor and you know you're going to get on with them.
Do you know what I mean? You, mm. you instinctively know you're going to understand them uh, and act really well together. Uh, most of the time you don't. And, you know, it's, it's a good relationship. But when you get that special person, it makes such a difference. It becomes so much easier to do your job. It's wonderful. I think the only time he actually shouted at me was when we were doing The Two Doctors. And there was a scene, we rehearsed for about nine days, it was great. But there was a scene where he's in this sort of wheelchair or bath chair. And Colin Bacon and I ganged up and kept pulling him the, the, the wheelchair back. And you end up like a turtle. And then one day, about the fourth day, he jumped up and said, you little shit, you're supposed to be in my gang. We should be ganging up on him. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to be in my gang. Oh. I mean, grown men, you know. So, did you work with Pat or Michael after doing Doctor Who? apart from the times you returned as Jamie in the specials? I tried to get Patrick into Emmerdale Farm, this soap I was doing, right. because there was, a, there was an old uh, Trask, I think his name was, an old sort of tramp, you know. <laughs> and the, the <laughs> he would have loved that. <laughs> and the producer said, no, I've heard that you and him had too much fun on Doctor Who, and this is a serious job. Oh, really? Yes. He said. Yeah. It was, I think David Goddard said, no, no, you two, I, I heard you had too much fun. Because David used to work for BBC. He said, I, I, you had too much fun on Doctor Who, so that was it. Mm. So he, he didn't get him. Oh, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Do you think he would have done it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because he, he would have grown a beard. He'd grown yeah, a beard. Yeah, big beard. Uh, and the yeah. hair. Yeah. You know, and make sure patch. nobody knew who he was. That, that's, <laughs> you know, yeah. the classics of yeah. like that, yeah. But we've yeah. never worked at all, have we? No, we Except haven't for, done anything at all. Together, apart from Big Finish, recently Big yeah. Finish, yeah. yeah, yeah, which is a real. I mean, it's a joy. Oh, it, yes. it is such a joy because the scripts are so wonderful, and now Fraser's back. You know, in 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 the in the Tardis, it's just. Yes. We, I, I felt there was a really good sort of relationship between us. Yes, and yeah. so many people have come up. You know, and and uh, they've been talking about the Big Finish, especially the one with Fraser and me, the mm -hmm. three set. Uh, at saying, oh, that relationship, you know, it feels so right. And, you know, it gives you that confidence to carry on. And I'm so glad that you, you came and you've taken over from Pat, because I was doing Pat before. Yeah, you I were. I was doing two, jo two jobs yeah, for the same thing. really difficult. For, for the same money, though. Yeah. Oh, really? No. <laughs> Big face That's outrageous. Every time I said, if Patrick was alive today, yes, Fraser, we'd have to pay Patrick, but no, you're not getting another fee. <laughs> So I, I always but said you I, did twice as much. Yeah, 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 honestly, twice. as much. I said I get I get paid to do Jamie, and I'm doing Patrick's mm. voice for the love of the man and keeping his his memory, you know, mm. for all the fans. Yeah, that was yeah. it. No, I never got paid. That's outrageous. So I'm, I'm glad you, you you're getting paid. Oh, you hope yeah. you're getting paid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. definitely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's. Uh, I remember when Frey, uh, I did a. I did a, a, a small part, not playing anybody, um, you know, not playing a doctor or anything like that. I came in and did something. Oh, yes. When, when Fraser... Mariners? Yeah, that's right. When Fraser was actually uh, doing Dad. And it was astounding because what he'd do is he'd, he'd do one voice, the blah, 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 and then he'd do Dad, and then he'd do all in one take. And there's a... <laughs> Got a funny story that uh, the first time I, I went into the, the studio, we're in separate little booths. They're a bit like sort of, I don't know, like TARDISes, only with glass windows. Yeah. And uh, Fraser was, I walked into the studio and Fraser was doing Dad, uh, a nice scene, you know, really good, good scene. And uh, he looked over and he went like this. He went, was that all right? He minded. Yeah. And I went, absolute rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> and then I go in and cuddled him. Yeah. Use it. He's brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant at it. But it's just moved on. It's a different kind yeah, of course. different kind of setup. Yeah. yeah. Well, what was it actually like for both of you to play Pat at separate times? Sorry? Well, for Big Finish, when you, when you played, you just spoke about playing Pat for Big Finish. Did I just play Pat? <laughs> no. <coughs> when you played dad yes okay what was what was your feeling what was it oh, like? yes. how did you get it together well the, th the th strange <laughs> thing is I know. The, the, my first one yeah. 
Will you speak slowly? Pretend I'm from Norway. He's a little yes. old. Okay. <laughs> he's he's going to be in a wheelchair sure. soon, so yes. please, okay. just gently with him, very gently. The, the first All one right. One. Yes, yes. All right, right love. Yes. Okay. I, my first one I did was Helicon Prime, and I did the first three pages, and I did Jamie's voice, yes. and then I did the Patrick's voice, mm. just as a doctor, you know, grown mm. up. And then Nigel Fraser, who was directing it, said, Fraser, I'm just going to play those three pages back into scenes, no glicks or whatever. And as, as he was doing that, I started to do Patrick's voice. And Nigel said, Fraser, hang on, you, you, you sound like Patrick then. I said, well, yes, I, I always do Patrick's little uh, g gag, you know, look at the size of that thing, dogs. Yeah, yes, Jamie, it is a big one, isn't it? <clears throat> and he said, well, try it again, the first three pages. I said, I, I, I can't sustain it that long. Said, try it. So I did it, and he said, that's it, keep it in. So that's how, you know... Yeah, <clears throat> because if you work with something for three years, you pick you pick up mannerisms or whatever. Yeah, I mean the specific one that I remember most of all is the cough, where he was trying to remember his lines. Essentially, everybody thought that was the sort of style he did, but he he'd go, oh, no, come along, Jamie, you know, uh, move along, and <clears throat> he'd do that, and and that was specifically to remember the next line. It was because the brain wouldn't catch up quick enough. And uh, I sort of had that same problem, but I didn't cough. I just pause. <laughs> I've inherited that, I think. Did you do, con did you do conventions <laughs> in, in the US with Pat? Did you yes. Do any of those? You did? Yeah, the first one I did was 84, uh, because we, were just, we just finished The Two Doctors. Yeah. And him and John and John Pertwee said, uh, or, or was the five doctors said, you've got to come on over. You, you know, and they rang up uh, Norman Rubenstein uh, of Spirit of Light and said, you've got to have Fraser. He's fun. So I went over, and uh, that was it. Yeah, it was great fun. We, we, was, was that the, was that your first one? Yeah, yeah. In fact, I've got a photograph in my other book, um, and there's Peter Davison, Colin Baker, Patrick, and I. And I've got my arm around Patrick, and we're doing a panel. And you can see the other two doctors thinking, we, we never got cuddle off our companions. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Patrick and I, you know, because we, yeah. oh, we loved the guy. He was really good. Yeah. What was, yeah. what was that convention? Do you remember where it was? Yeah, Chicago. Oh, Chicago. Yeah. 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 And I bought, I bought a baseball. You, uh, I upset him once. I bought him a baseball cat. When he said, boring old fart. I said, oh, I've got a baseball cat. He went... I'm not really boring. Oh. No, I said, no, Pat, no, no, don't. Yeah. I just thought yeah. it would be a gag, you know. But. Well, it's like that story Annika tells of, uh, you know, when he, uh, he, he got his hair cut and, and uh, put the hat on. And uh, they, 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 they said, no, you can't do that. It looks ridiculous. And he went, oh, does it really? I was, I was really looking forward to, you know, using the hat. Because that's why the hat disappears so quickly. Um, because he yes. felt so, you know, he was quite, he was quite, you know, he, he took, he took comments quite seriously, actually. Yeah. If you, if you, if you took the mickey out of him, even as, you know, even I remember, you know, going, oh, come on, don't do that, or making a joke. He'd go, oh, you don't mean that, really, do you? You know, so he was quite sensitive, which made him a great actor. Yeah. And he was very private about his painting. I never knew about his painting till kind of the... I went to his house once, and about three years into the show, and it was always a wonderful painting. It was like an art gallery. Yeah. I mean, wherever you went, there was his paintings. He uh, he used to do these wonderful copies. I mean, uh, there was an article that was written about him that basically said that he could be a really good forger uh, if he yeah. if he used the right paints. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, look. Yeah. Oh. oh, there they are. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he. Uh, he really enjoyed that. Um, and he wasn't taught how to do it. He was, he just basically copied. He was a really good copier of masters like uh, Constable and all the greats, you know. Um, I did have one uh, uh, in, in the back garden. It's, it's in, the, uh, in the back um, room. But uh, it's in storage at the moment. But it's it's a lovely There's bit. Loads. Look at the loads there. Yeah, that's, that's the, yeah, that's his flat in, in, uh, in Kew. Yeah, where are we? he he was a great handyman as well. He uh, he built an extension on the back of his flat. I'm sure he didn't get planning permission either. He just, one day I walked in and there was like this extra bit with glass overlooking Bushy Park. It was lovely, beautifully done. Um, but uh, I think to this day I don't think the building regulation people knew it was there, which was he quite did fun. A, he, he did a loft conversion and the people in the upstairs flat were very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they hang everywhere. They were everywhere. They were in the yeah. loo. You couldn't escape them. Uh, they were was, everywhere. Was he painting all the time at the end? Um, yeah, I mean, he did. Um, he did. He did actually um, go to you know uh, show them in galleries and things like that oh. towards the end in Richmond um, in uh, in London, um, and he did rather well out of them. Uh, he was quite excited, you know. Oh, I I sold that one. He said for you know five hundred pounds. This is a brand new career, you know. It's just wonderful, yeah, yeah. But he 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 also was a great bird watcher as well. He loved birds, which I I love doing too. And uh, he would draw beautiful pictures of of what he'd seen. Lovely birds. He was very good at painting birds. Very good. He liked the other sort too. Yeah. So what? If any, what's your what's your funniest memory of your time? Well, I'll tell dad? you a funny memory of, of Dad at home. Um, dad had this, it was very strange. Um, if there was any medicine around, you know, somebody was taking. Uh, and in those days, a lot of medicine was in suspension. It was in liquid form. And, uh, you know, uh, he'd come into the kitchen and go, oh, what's that? And I'd go, well, um, that's a sort of hiccup juice. And he'd take a swig. He would go, oh, yeah, that's rather nice. And, and he, didn't, he didn't care what the medicine was. He'd go for, the, go for the taste. And unfortunately, one day, we had a big bottle of some lotion for our dog. Oh. Ah. Uh, and it was a skin complaint that the dog had oh. and it was meant to be dabbed onto rather than taken internally and of course he came in merrily and went oh I wonder what like, you know and before I could go nah, he'd taken a swig and the whole thing shot out like projectile oh. vomit oh. because it was so disgusting <laughs> and I said well that serves you right for taking other people's medicines it's not a good thing yeah, yeah. So, yeah, interesting story that. Yeah. So, so, Fraser, I don't know if you can top that, but what's your funniest memory <coughs> with Pat anywhere? Uh, uh, God, wait, um, funniest moment. Um, mm. Trying to think. Uh, yeah, I think the funniest moment was um, he had a lovely car, Rover Two Thousand, and uh, I, I had this motoring magazine, and. Um, in the magazine, you could get screen washers, you know, on the bonnet, and it was called, it was a mannequin piece, which is a, a little Belgian statue in, in Brussels of a little, uh, two little silver, and you press, and they used to pee on your windscreen. <laughs> just to screen. To, so I said, oh, I've got this marvelous thing. He said, oh, bring, bring the magazine in. So I got home that night, and my mother had thrown the magazine away. So I went the next day, and I said, Patrick, said, what, what, you, what, where's, the, where's the magazine? I said, uh, my mother threw it. He said, ah, you're telling me that. Yeah, you, you tell me. Oh, that, that's, that's the Rover 2000, yeah. Oh, what's that? He said, oh, you're telling me you're like. I said, no, honestly, honestly. And, and on the way home that night, I stopped the traffic lights, and there, in this car showroom was a white Rover 2000, second hand, and on the bonnet, two little silver statue boys. So I went in, I said, how much for my car? And we agreed, I, I wrote the check out, and I drove the car. Next day I got to rehearsal, and said, Patrick, said, oh, you're not going to go to bloody hang again. I said, you know, I said, I bet you 10 quid, which is like 100 pounds of today's money. I bet you 10 quid, he said, all right, you're on, you're on, okay. So I came out, I said, look, you oh, yes. Oh my God, yes they are. I said, look, this is how they work. I, I opened the door. How, how did you, just a minute. You bought the car. I said, yeah, just to get 10 quid off you, you mean bastard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's classic. That's classic. That makes a lovely car. Right. Sure, yeah, beautiful car. That lovely walnut dashboard it has. Yeah, 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 gorgeous. Did you guys spend loads of time outside work? Just hanging we, out. We played golf a lot. Mm. Pat and I, yeah, we, we played a lot of golf. Yeah, I that. yeah, yeah. At, at Richmond, yeah. Yeah, Rich, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know well, yeah. I mean, he was a lot better golfer than I was, you know, but I just, just liked to hang out with him and play yes. golf. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he was... Uh, 
Oh, I used to play golf with him, especially towards the end of his life. Um, I got to know him a lot better because, uh, you know, I, I lived around the corner from him. We played a lot of golf together. And he used to get so annoyed if he was playing badly. So much so that he'd, you know, throw his clubs on the floor and, <laughs> and he'd be so frustrated. Uh, and he had another habit of weeing in the open rather than going behind going behind a tree or anything he would he would go oh do excuse me he just turned around in the middle of, <laughs> on the on the middle of the of the you know fairway so and do you have a picture of him oh it's a picture of him. Oh, is that? oh there he is there. <laughs> <laughs> he would wee and uh, I think most of the members of the... It was a stage golfing society, wasn't it? I think the lady members had just got used to it because I'd often hear things like, what on earth is that man doing? And then you'd hear, oh, don't worry, darling, that's just Doctor Who having a piss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was an extraordinary thing, but he just... You know, on on certain things, he just didn't have that sort of control. You know, he just, oh, I've got to go for a wee, and he just did it. You know, very yeah. strange. Very so strange. the lady members got used to his member. <laughs> very much so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and a few others as well. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, he's a great one for the ladies. He could charm the birds off a tree. Oh, it, it, uh, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that old story of, you know, I probably, you probably heard it before, but, it, the, you know, uh, whenever I used to go into rehearsals, um, and and start a show, do a read through. You know, many elderly actresses would meander up to me and whisper in my ear, "I knew your father rather well." <laughs> and I go, "Oh yeah, <laughs> number two. <laughs> so yeah, he did like the ladies, and he. I mean, I can understand why. I mean, boy, was he a charmer, oh, wasn't yeah. he? He was such a charmer." <laughs> You know, especially when the ladies were around. He would light up, you know, he's, he's extraordinary. And not the best of dressers. No, no. Dress, no one, dressed no like a tramp. Yes. Yeah, I mean, he'd have, he'd have a rope tied round instead of a belt. <laughs> and he used to have that dolly bag, he'd that, call it, yeah, didn't like he? Like a wooden yeah. woolly, woolly yes, bag. Yes, yeah, from, from Salon or somewhere where he'd got, I don't know, from Greece or somewhere. Uh, and he'd, uh, he'd have a pair of baggy corduroys on. Uh, and the, the hush puppies that he yes. wore as, as the doctor yes. and as yeah. Patrick at rehearsal. And they got so worn, he used to polish them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And it was suede. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he was quite interesting. Yeah. So, so he was quite private, wasn't he? Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah. <laughs> well, apart from peeing in the open, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he was very private. Yeah, yeah, he, very, uh, yeah. Very private man. Um, so, so, um, yeah. So, what was he like with interviews? And um, um, well, I mean, how did he feel about interviews? Yeah, you he didn't like them, no. Yeah, yeah. No, he yeah. Didn't like, we were, we were, uh, there was, Simon D was a big, famous TV show, and Simon D kept asking us two to go on. I said, oh, Patrick, said, no, no. Once I take my costume off, I'm Patrick yeah, Troughton. Yes, no, yeah. he didn't want to sort of talk. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was the reason he didn't do the conventions so much in the UK, because he had this terrible idea that he was going to be typecast. Uh, and, you know, the association of Patrick Troughton and Doctor Who, you know, was going to stick too much. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't carry on and do anything else. But I kept saying it's ridiculous because, you know, you've got such a wealth of work before yeah. you. It doesn't matter, you know. And I was right because about a week later, he got this huge series after leaving Doctor Who um, about Henry VIII, so yeah, I mean, it was fine. And then so. the Omen, he did the Omen as well. That's right, yes. yes. You know, yes. big Hollywood it's movie. It's one of my favorites, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, he was in it for 10 minutes at the beginning. Um, and uh, it, it's one of the big things that when I, I talk to, you know, people, uh, that, that they say that was, that had such an impression on them. It's extraordinary, it was only 10 minutes, but it was because he's such a good actor. Mm. The other, the other thing about it is that he always taught me is always either being at the beginning of a film or at the end, not in the middle, because they'll forget you. <laughs> Does anyone here like The Omen? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, how, how about... Yeah. Um, what a great death as well. Yes. Yes. I was talking about great it's deaths, you know, dying is great. I mean, not, no, not yeah. really, but being an actor, a death is a wonderful thing to act. And boy, what a great death that is, you know. A lightning conductor right through the middle of you. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, recently I just discovered the scripts from the opening with all the rewrites on it and stuff like that. It's wonderful. See, it's fascinating to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, That's Jamie, it is a big one, isn't it? Cute. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a great, it's a great shot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, is, is it time to for a QA? and a do you think should yeah. we do a QA? and a yeah, yeah let's do a QA. and a does any hello <laughs> does anyone have any questions don't speak all at once <laughs> any questions about uh oh I think maybe Edward. <laughs> no no yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was this young lady here no, no, from the Hay Festival. We've got Elaine and we have yeah. Kelly. Go Kelly. Let's start with Kelly. Yeah. Kelly. You, other than the doctor, do you have a favorite role of his? Right. Uh, wow. Favorite role? Um... Was, Shall I go? Yes, yes. Um, I think my favourite role in recent times was The Box of Delights, uh, where he plays that wonderful wizard character with another beard. Um, yeah, I think that, that is one of my favourites. Um, I'll think about later, uh, earlier on. Um, the, I think maybe the Duke of Norfolk, when he, he went into... That's straight after who? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Henry the Henry the Eighth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. A, Oh, that's yeah. it. There he is. Oh, yeah. no, that's a box that's of delights. Box of delights. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, lovely. Look at that beard, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looks great. Yeah, who's the bloke with the beard? <laughs> it real? It was. Oh, yeah. He had this that's extraordinary that's ability to grow that's beards that's really quickly. You know, one one week <laughs> it take about a week for it to grow. You know, and it was an extraordinary color as well. It was sort of ginger. He had a, 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 a ginger color to that, it. That was well, a false not there, beard. That that was a false, right. His right, real one yeah. was in his pocket, I think. Yeah. 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 So, Elaine, Elaine, yeah. please. Yeah, that's a really good question, good actually. Question. Yeah. Yeah, he called it all that shouting in the evening. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, he, he, he had an early career in theatre, but then he discovered that, you know, television was on the up, and he called it the national theatre. Television, he thought, was a national theatre, because it was bringing drama into the living room. You know, you didn't have to go out and uh, order drinks and sit on very uncomfortable seats, he said. Uh, so that's essentially why he, you know, he, he went through the television sort of way and film way. Um, you know, it also, I think he quite enjoyed the subtlety that it brought. Uh, you know, he, he was a very emotional actor. He worked from the inside out. Uh, you know, he wasn't, he didn't like projecting large performances. I have to sort of agree with him. My, my brother was very successful, David, very successful in theatre. Uh, and he enjoys that very large performance. Whereas I think I follow in my dad's footsteps and I'm much more, I'm much more the sort of um, television and film. And I follow that all the way through because I, I didn't do very much theatre um, after I was about 20. I was quite lucky, really. I did a few tours, but uh, mostly television and film. You did uh, Joseph. Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And you sang. It was a minor, he it was a minor tour. Wow. He sang. It was a minor tour. Uh, 
Way, way back many centuries ago, not long after the Bible began, Jacob lived in the land of Canaan. Yeah, anyway, you know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, it was when I was very young. I had a leather coat on. It was great. It's really and sexy. Really hot. Yeah, really hot, yeah. And it lasted, it was about two and a half, three week tour. Uh, and that was my in introduction to musicals. And I've never done one since. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's, yes. Very tall gentleman. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, question for Michael. When, when you were writing your father's biography, did you learn anything that you didn't already know? I learned an awful lot about his private life. A huge amount, actually. It was a voyage of discovery because, uh, I, for people who read the book, they know this, but my dad left home when I was a baby. So I didn't really know dad as, uh, you know, uh, a father. I knew him as a friend, friendly uncle who came round and played with me, you know, uh, and, my, and my brother. Um, and the choice of me to write the biography, uh, the whole of the family say, well, the original family say, was the right thing because, you know, it. Uh, I didn't really, I wasn't affected. I didn't have any starting emotions about it. So I could look at it, you know, with a clean sheet. Um, yeah, I mean, I discovered an awful lot, especially about the other families he had as well, and his other children. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was a, a big voyage of discovery. Um, a lot of interesting things I discovered, <laughs> uh, which you read in the book. Because <laughs> he never he never spoke about the war, you know, the, the commanding a no, torpedo boat. No, he wouldn't speak to me either about it. No, I mean, that's often a thing, though, isn't it? That, that, that uh, I mean, my, my father-in-law from my first marriage, he, he would never, he was a Spitfire pilot, and he would never talk about uh, what he'd gone through. Uh, but it was great actually doing the research for Dad's book about, you know, discovering what he actually did. Oh, hello. Oh, back again. He's here. Yeah. Ooh, he's he here. is here, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Hello, Pat. <laughs> hello, oh, Pat. she's going. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, discovering, you know, uh, what he did. He was in mo motor torpedo boats, uh, you know, uh, chasing e-boats in the channel. So it was quite, quite interesting. Exciting. Just as a quick follow-on to Stuart's question, how long did it take you to uh, research, do the book? Um, it, it was quite quick, actually. Uh, the research took about a year. Um, I was quite lucky because I, I had a lot of information. My sister filled in the bits that I didn't really know when, when I wasn't born. Uh, my brother was totally useless. He said, I can't remember a thing. <laughs> and that was it. That was nothing for him. I contacted some members from the second family, and one in particular, Mark, was very helpful. He, uh, he filled me in on that other side that I didn't really know about very much um, you know uh, which Fraser probably he you probably know more about the relationship he had with the other family because that was during Doctor Who time yeah yeah in fact, in fact I think I gave you two photographs of one of them when he was the, uh, the E boat, uh, they talk about about captain. Oh, yes. For the boat, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Somebody yeah. had sent them to me ages that's ago. That's right. Wow. Yeah, he used to wear a tea cozy instead of a bobble hat. <laughs> uh, tea cozy on top of his head. And uh, he was a captain eventually of um, a rescue craft that would go picking up uh, pilots from the, the uh, nor uh, North Sea and the, the Channel. Uh, but originally he was on a motor gunboat. Uh, that was actually captained by the son of the captain of the Titanic. Oh. And unfortunately, he, the, the, this captain was actually killed uh, on D-Day. So, uh, you know, luckily, Dad wasn't on board. He was on his, his, his own ship by then. But, uh, yeah, very sad, very sad. Uh, yes, over there with our lovely lady. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Nick Briggs, the guy who uh, runs it, um, he just phoned me up out of the blue. 
uh, and said, what do you think about this idea? Have a think about it. And, uh, you know, he phoned back a week later. And I said, <clears throat> you know, initially I was a little bit, you know, this idea that the sun is playing in it. It's all, you know, uh, you know, uh, a little bit for the advertising and, you know, um, it, it could have gone the wrong way. But, you know, I felt it was... Uh, it was uh, the script. The, the, the scripts that I read was so good that I thought I'd have a go at it. And if I had, if I hadn't had done a good job the first time, um, I think I would have stopped. But I felt I'd accomplished a good level in, in the first first one, so I, I carried on. Um, the second part of it is, you know, yeah, I did have reservations, um, but. You know, um, I I thought Dad would be looking down and saying, "For God's sake, do the job! It's money." <laughs> so I did that. Do you know, that's the first thing I said. That's the first thing I said to, to Nick. I said, but Fraser does it so well. You know, why do you want to change? And he basically said, because it's a new, new, a new idea, this 6B, you know, this in-between time, between the Time Lords and, and Pertwee falling out of his, uh, you know, out of the TARDIS, he felt that uh, it was time to change. And what he wanted to do was to have Fraser as an older person, mm. you know, uh, and I think that's that's what kicked it. The scripts were going that way so that Fraser could play more of his own sort of age rather than, you know, carrying on as the young Jamie. Because you have to talk quite high, don't you? You know what I mean? I can still get up there, Doctor. No, that's right. Yeah, uh, doctor, look at the size of that thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You still do it. <laughs> Yeah. Young. No matter what you do on audio, your voice sounds like Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It just comes straight back to you. So, maybe, do you have to work on it? I said, no, you mm. just. Mm. And li li even Wendy, Wendy Padbury, when she plays Zoe, mm. she has a cigarette and she puts this fag out. Oh, hello, Doctor. Yeah. 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 Then she said, oh, I know the fag now. And she gets, the voice goes down. Yeah. <laughs> she still yeah. sounds the same, she really. Does. She almost she looks the same as well. She, yeah, she, she's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. amazing. Yeah. Oh, over there. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Love. Oh yeah, yeah. He loved Laurence Olivier. He was taken under the wing by Laurence Olivier uh, it, with a group of young actors, uh, and uh, they they got this wonderful job. Uh, first of all, it was Hamlet where he played one of the players, and then because he'd done so good, such a good job in that, Laurence Olivier invited him over to do the tour in America of Cleopatra. Um, you know, with Vivian Lee, was it? Yes, yeah, Vivian yeah. Lee, yeah. Uh, and they did the other version of it as well by Bernard Shaw. So they, 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 they did one night, they did the Shakespeare version, and then the next night they did the Bernard Shaw version. Uh, and, yeah, there was a point, I think, where um, he could have carried on and, and in the company. But, of course, television came up at that moment, and he was so attracted to that. Uh, I think he he decided that stage probably wasn't going to be the place to to be, and I think that was the pivot. But yeah, I mean, he he did know Laurence Olivier very well. Yeah, he played one of the murderers, doesn't he? Yeah, he and did Richard indeed. III? Yes, Richard the Third. Yeah, nasty, nasty. Uh, basically, being told to go and murder the two princes. I think, isn't oh. it? Yeah, yeah, horrible. Terrible. We have a very special one over there at the back. Oh. Who's your favorite doctor besides Patrick? Ooh. My favorite doctor besides Patrick, I love them all, all of them. I think they are incredibly clever because they produce such wonderful different characters. But I have to say, 
Peter Capaldi was yep. an extremely good doctor. Uh, and that's not because I know him well, but I just, I just think he, you know, he, because he was a fan, he got such a, he got such a good take on it. Um, yeah, Peter. Yeah, I, I, Peter, I was to say Peter as well. I, I did a play in Cardiff and we got to the theatre. Oh, Peter Capaldi's, you know, filming studios. He, he'd like to meet you tomorrow. So I went to the studios and there was Peter and of course he said, oh, you've got to white robot there, and all you see, and you got this done. And he said, I've got to do this scene. I said, well, thanks a lot. He said, no, 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 wait, 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 I'll just do this scene. And he did the scene, and it, then he said, where's your camera? And, and I chased him around the TARDIS, and then he said, well, where's my camera? And then he chased me around, <laughs> you know, we had great pictures. Yeah. And then he did this scene, and uh, Rachel Talley was the director, and he did the scene and then cut, and he went, just a minute. And he pointed to me and said, see him? If it wasn't for him and his doctor, we wouldn't be working here today. Yeah. And they all gave me a round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to say that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, Sylvester will be another my second. You know. I, I agree with you, actually, yeah. Sylvester, yeah. Although some of the scripts towards the end were, you know, mm. a little bit strange. Uh, I do think Sylvester is a really, really good actor. And, and didn't he show it in Lord of the Ring? Um, was it Lord of the Ring? No, it was um, the, the Hobbit. Whoa, well, that was wonderful. What a great character. Yeah, and what a lovely man. Absolutely, a real gentleman. Absolutely lovely guy. If you get a chance to see a film called Lost at Christmas, uh, that's Sylvester and I, we play two old Scottish guys in, in this pub uh, up in Scotland. And uh, we, we were playing these Scots, and Sylvester had the idea, he said, so, Fraser, if we do it with a Highland accent, we get longer screen time. If you say, we find you a drink, or who'd you be after having a wee dram of whiskey with her now? Well, we'll do that. <laughs> so the first scene we did, and Ryan Hendry, the director, went, you two buggers, I know what you're doing, but keep it in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mm. that's yes, right. It is. Yes. Yeah, today yes, I think, yes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Today, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there is Paul of Tarsus. Is that Paul of Tarsus? Oh, yeah. 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 Actually, here's a quick question. Uh, do you have a favourite Doctor Who episode, whether it's your own mm. or anybody else's? Mm. Uh, yeah, the mind. Well, Wendy Pabry always says a mind robber, and they say, "Oh, why is that?" It's because Fraser was missing for an episode, you know. <laughs> but no, no I, I, I'm always asked, "What's your favourite story?" It's got to be the Highlanders, it really has, because yeah. if I hadn't done those four episodes, if I'd said, "Oh, I watch Doctor Who," it's children TV. I don't like it. Yeah. I would not have seen Australia, New Zealand, America, Milton Keynes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Milton Keynes, the all, best. All over the, it's yeah. the best. <laughs> all over the world. So when's the animated coming? Uh, what? Yeah, when are you going to animate that? I don't know. That, that, that should be the next one. Yeah, you should catch up. Yeah. Um, you're actually going to Australia soon. Yes, yes. I, I'm off to do a, a convention in, yeah. in Australia. I, I did that one in Australia about four, four years ago. And because you're always told to you know, check your boots and all that. And I rang down to reception. I said, excuse me, there's a dead bug in my room. She said, sir, this is Australia. You're bound to see a dead bug in your room. I said, I don't mind the dead bug. It's the 2,000 have come to his funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Oh, hello. They Ian. are actually funny enough. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Evil of the Daleks is coming out in October. Yes. My latest yes. book. Yes. You're off to uh, Spain as well, aren't you? Off to, uh, y yes. Sunny uh, Spain? Sunny Spain to do a pantomime, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. In, yes. in Spain, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. I'm envious. What's next for you? For me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. <laughs> Oh. Well, for me, uh, there's lots of big finish in the pipeline. Yes. Yeah, there's two lots of big finish, which we can't talk about. No, that's right. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, I'm sort of semi-retired now. I got to the stage where I th thought I'd make myself a studio and uh, start doing audiobooks, which is what I mostly do now, voiceovers oh. and audiobooks. And I have a booth that uh, comes down 
from the ceiling in my bedroom, and I don't bother to get up. No, not really. I built a studio, yeah. And I'm having great fun doing that, you know, and uh, also enjoying life as well. Yes. <laughs> Instead of, yeah, thank you. Instead of having to travel up and down the road to, you know, interviews that you never get, so, right. yeah. Edwin. My Oh, well, that's oh, a Edwin. great idea. <laughs> yes. Edwin. Yeah, good I question. I had no idea when I pictured it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I think I will actually ask uh, Nick yeah. Briggs. That's a great idea. I, yeah. I, I've got a It'll voice be a bit for radio. I've got a face for radio. <laughs> <It's> for <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have to make the booth a bit bigger. It'll be a bit of a squash. It, <laughs> well, no. It'll be it's just that I can hardly get in. So, <laughs> You know, it's quite small. Thank you, Edwin. You can narrate yeah. I can do that. That's oh, a good idea, you, yeah. Are you doing that yeah. autobiography? <laughs> oh, yeah, the autobiography that everybody has. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Right, right. Yeah. Any, any last questions? Anyone? Yes. Oh, okay. Still got the kilter, still fit. Yes, it does actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, still got it. I, I'm... I'm trying to get the one I wore in the two doctors, that one, the, the wrapped round one. Uh, I like that one in particular. Uh, it's, a, it's a mission to find out uh, Berman's and Nathan's, or was it? Yeah, or yeah, Morris Angel's. Right. Yeah, some one of those, yeah. yeah. They've amalgamated. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, never no. mind. <laughs> oh, don't no. ask personal questions. Uh, no. Oh, Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, it depends on the. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, lovely. Oh. That's, lovely. Oh. Yeah. that's a great. That's yeah. a great shot. Yeah. <laughs> we we have a question here. Are you still doing astrophysics research? I'm actually doing an astrophysics degree at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been doing it for about six years. It's uh, <clears throat> it's with the university part time, uh, and I'm at the. I, I did relativity uh, <laughs> last year, which was quite something. And then I'm now on to the high energetic universe. That's the next module, which I'm terrified of because <laughs> there's so much maths. <laughs> but uh, I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. Really enjoying it. She's Zoe was it again. Hi, Pat. <laughs> Zoe was an astrophysicist, wasn't she? Yeah. 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 You can play Zoe's part. Oh yes, yeah, Zoe. I'll oh, play Zoe. She's yes. astrophysicist. <laughs> Uh, skirt. Yes. yes, I'll put yes. a little skirt. I've got good legs. That's true. Yeah. Did you like the astrophysicist so much? Did you ever think consider reaching out to the local astrophysicist here? Oh, is he? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who's who's that fame? Who, who's that famous um, uh, member of the band? It's Queen, isn't it? Who's the oh, name? Brian May. Yeah, Brian, Brian May. May. Yeah, he he did it, so anybody can do it. <laughs> Brilliant. Brian Cox as well. Oh, Brian, you know, Cox, Brian Cox. Yes, you know Brian, Brian Cox. May. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sheldon yeah. Cooper. Yeah. Big band. Sheldon Cooper. Cooper. <laughs> oh yeah. Brilliant. It's a classic. We've got time for one last question. One last question. Gone. Gone. How much fun? Oh, 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 oh there we go. Okay. So, how was it doing your first day? Yeah! Well done, Rox. Thanks to you, all of you, best experience I've ever had. Yay! Nerve-wracking, well but best. Well Thanks done. You. Give us a kiss. Thanks to you Give guys. Us a kiss. And, Brilliant. and thanks to these two. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You watched that whole video. <laughs> Lucky you. You should subscribe to it or something. It makes you smart, like me. So have fandom and follow your fun. Oh, and shut up and take my videos.